Sedona does create an inspiration in people because they are, they're awoken, their senses are awoken to the power of nature when they come here. It makes me proud to see how people react that visit here. And there is a look in their eyes that they have when they see the artwork that is in this community. It's profound, it's amazing. There's a lot of artists here and I like that, you know. I just think of all the times that I've enjoyed Sedona. It's a personal relationship and a personal journey to making a piece of jewelry and to hiking in nature. The art that we create, whether it's music or writing or painting or sculpting or dance, it goes out and it helps the world. And that's, that's what Sedona's about, and I feel it really strongly. It's like a little language that you have with the paintbrush and you talk to them and they talk back to you. Sometimes they obey and sometimes you just go, well, I'm going to go get another brush. <laughs> As I paint, the paintings unfold. I don't have a plan from beginning to end. I have a beginning and then I have a journey. And the journey is each step at a time changes the, the end of the journey, the outcome. So it's a wonderful way to work because it allows you maximum freedom and flexibility to allow the energies that are coming in to make this creative expression be able to uh, use me as a tool, as opposed to me using the story as a tool. It's coming from inside me and it's an authentic story. It's what something I felt and experienced that happened to me. And so it comes out and, and people, they resonate with authenticity. Where if somebody's telling you a story because they were told to tell you a story, and this is the story, it's different than if I tell you the story because it was my story and I could tell it from the inside out. I painted this big painting and I thought I knew what I was painting and it was the mountains at night, a flowering cherry bonsai tree and the wind is blowing the blossoms off the tree so you're getting the idea of beauty and impermanence and the transformation from one state to another. I'm going, to, wow, it's really looking good. Well, these windows were open just like this. And in flies this giant white plane, praying mantis and lands right there. It was just like I was painting here. It came and landed right in the corner of the painting. So I said, well, well pray, Mr. Praying Mantis, um, what, you want to be in this painting? And the praying mantis said, yeah, that's why I'm here. And I said, well, you can only go in the painting if you have a story. Do you have a story? The praying mantis said, well, well, yes, I have a story. My story starts with a question. Okay, what's, what's your question? I said, did you know there's two kinds of praying mantises? There are praying mantises that pray on you, and there's praying mantises that pray for you. And I'm the praying mantis that is praying for the falling blossoms of love. And I went, you got it, you're in. <laughs> Would you sit still for a minute? <laughs> and it did. You know, the praying mantises are, they'll stand in one place forever. I try to paint every day. That way things, I feel things are moving forward. I don't like to stop. I don't get bored. I always have a thousand things or 10,000 things, like they say in the Tao Te Ching, that I want to do. 
They're there and I want to show them my way of looking at them to others. When you do it for, you know, for 60 years, it becomes like a second part of who you are. It's not a struggle anymore. It's a, it's a pushing into territories with the tools that you've finally honed your whole life and to be able to express the things that are coming through in a way that are harmonious and radiant and full of the wholeness of what people want to have for an experience in their own lives. The art is never completed until someone else has received it. And that doesn't mean they have to buy it, but they're standing in front of it and they get it and then they share it. They share it back to me or with someone else, but preferably back with me. We always say, if somebody buys a big piece of art, I want to go to dinner, have a bottle of wine, and sit and talk about what it was that connected them and what it was that connected me and how those two things show us that we have something deeply inside of us that's in common, that is very special and makes us human. But there are people who come in and they weep in front of the paintings. You know, how beautiful is that? You know, that to me, that's the end of my journey. And that's what I want to leave behind that can go on without me actually being there. Because to me, that's the, the, the energy that I want to imbibe in my art to share with others. And it is the sharing that is the greatest part. In Japan, a painter's name is bestowed upon the artist when his peers feel that what you're doing is you. It's not a copy of anyone else. It's really coming, it's individuated creativity coming from your soul being expressed into the world. And so they give you a, what is called a chop or a goggle and uh, you stamp the corner of your painting with it. And my name that I was given was Honshin. And Honshin means the original mind is the heart. It's about things coming from the heart, from the inside, expressing themselves. And that's what they felt I was doing. So it's a very honorable name, and I want to keep, uh, keep it in line. And most important, though, it's about the energy that comes through that name and through me not about my personality, and I want the energy to be out there for people to share in the future when I won't be here any longer. Always when I paint, each brush stroke, it comes with a prayer, and those prayers are for uh, the success of the journey I'm on, and that the results will benefit all, all human beings and all life everywhere.